from inside. And, um, and so the work has started. They built the tents, as you can see, to protect from the rain. And uh, I'll show you once it's uh, open, but um, they need to cut. Oh, hang on, bro. Let's catch everyone up real quick. Yes, we're the brand new boat that got T-Bone, but here's how we got here. After a big transition to liverboard cruising, we got our first boat and started our journey in the med. So, this is the boat. Bright and early. What's the occasion? I had coffee. After two years, we decided to switch from a production catamaran to a performance catamaran to take on a circumnavigation. We have a potential buyer to buy one. Here's a good boat. You've been good to us. It's a good first boat for sure. Well, your second, my first. You never forget your first. <laughs> <laughs> While we waited for our Utumer 52 to be built, we up-leveled our skills to take on this new challenge. We finally got our boat and had a little fun with the summer that was left. Build up speed, build up speed, catch the next wave, and surf down. But because we didn't have much time for a shakedown before our transatlantic crossing, we decided to get a skipper instructor on board for each leg of our maiden journey as we made a three-leg passage. Thanks to Starlink, we started a daily passage video series to take our friends and family with us on this all-together voyage to Miami, where we made a date with Utumer to meet up at the Miami Boat Show to debut the Utumer 52 on our way to the Bahamas. Our first leg from La Grande Motte to the Canary Islands was rough mostly upwind and not very comfortable. With Jean-Marc, we got practice on maneuvers and going through the Gibraltar Strait, where we ripped a sail, dodged orcas, and discovered issues that come with any normal shakedown. We accidentally tore a hole in our A2. Um, it got caught on the cleat. So I would say the, the through line for the last day or so is probably been humility. Okay, so the short story is we lost steering. So now we have salt water in the bilges. Um, we think maybe it's the water maker. Well, solving one problem at a time. So we made it to the Canary Islands. Uh, we're trying to find a place to get our boat repaired. <laughs> Come on, Jean-Marc. Whoop, whoop. He's just excited to get off the boat. <laughs> in the Canaries, Everything that broke got fixed as we waited for Nikki Henderson and Stefan's daughter, Segalin, to join us for leg okay. two. Your world is about to change. <laughs> what is that? Three girls. Right here. You're so dorky. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's wrong with our shirts? Before even leaving the dock for leg two, we wrapped our propeller, and that wasn't all that was in store for us as we spent Christmas at sea. We experienced every sailing angle possible due to the shifty conditions, and we got practice dealing with water ingress. We wrapped a spinnaker and had to keep up with Nikki's enthusiasm for lots of sail changes and learning new tricks like downwind reefing. <laughs> oh, hard workouts. Yeah, we're almost there. Land hoy. What is it, Sashin? Land ho. Land ho. Is the water clear and clean? Yeah, you can tell you. After 16 days, we arrived in Martinique. The bridal. We have... On the bridal. <laughs> we're, we're on land. I know, Almost. It's official. The, the boat is on land. We're anchored to land. <laughs> Hello. Did it. And just when we had the boat to ourselves for the first time, we got T boned at anchor. I mean, the whole hole's cracked. Yeah. Is there any water? No. The team in La Marin and at Otremere rallied and got us up out of the water and on the hard set up for repairs in just a couple of hours. Our plan was to head to the Palmas this season with a quick stop in Miami for the boat show. But now it's a race against time.
so it's a race against time. When we first came into the marina after the accident, we weren't sure how long it was going to take, if it was going to wreck the whole season, if we were going back to the U.S., if all was sort of going to take a really long time or not. Uh, it turns out that the situation is better than we originally thought. It's not a good situation, and there's certainly damage, but um, there seems to be a path to getting it done. So right now, the rough timeline, sort of, that people are, are kind of rallying around is February 2nd. And that would give us nine days, roughly, to get to Miami from Martinique. It's still about roughly 1,300 nautical miles, um, so it would be definitely a push. You know, the paperwork has moved really quickly, the insurance stuff has moved really quickly, Outremer's work moved quickly, all of the people in the boatyard are motivated to get it done. Um, we'll see if the, everything cooperates, the weather needs to cooperate and everything. Um, and also we need to, now that we're potentially doing a boat delivery versus island hopping, um, we also need to find some uh, people to help us move the boat. Uh, so that's another thing we need to start to focus on. We'll document every step of the way of the uh, repair, but at a high level, and I reserve the right to be wrong <laughs> on how it's going to be done, but my understanding is already happening. So they're building scaffolding right now, they're going to build a tent, they're removing the sticker. So that's preparation work. The crack that you can see from the outside where the impact was, so they're going to basically follow this crack and make a cut. And the way they do the repair is they do the repair from the outside and then first, and then rebuild the inside. So it's, and then this company has like a cutting machine. They do the same building process as basically any boat any legitimate boat manufacturer does, like Outremer. It's going to be vacuum sealed and everything. So it's we know for sure it's going to be like top notch. Those guys build their own boats here, like uh, custom boats. It's a professional composite outfit. Yes. Yeah to the letter of like the yeah. way it it'll be probably done. be better than it was oh <laughs> he did not say that uh, but they're very very confident yeah. uh, of how um, it's going to be done and it's going to be every time you do a repair you make it uh, even uh, stronger than it was uh, before so that's yeah the work was and, supposed and then to there's start finishing work and then yeah then the the sticker like so Utomer is working with their uh, partner uh, back in like on mud and the stinker sticker is going to be printed at the same machine same color same everything be sent here so, so it's exactly the same so in the end nobody will know everything will be uh, strong and well everybody will know because we <laughs> yes that's true good point yeah because we'll document it but everybody will know every step of the way so no uh, one will notice that. yes yeah so yeah little challenging situation everything is looking up on the boat repair side but we kind of try not to look too far forward and plan too far forward and be disappointed. But at the same time, if we want to, if everything is going to work according to plan, uh, we need to start planning. Uh, from the time the boat is expected to be ready and the time that we have to be in Miami, we will have nine days. Nine days is now like a delivery. Uh, it's like a commando operation to get from Martinique to Miami. Not anymore highland hopping, Holly and I, and cruising and anchoring and meeting other cruisers. And at one point, just um, uh, head to Miami. It's going to be Martinique to Miami, one shot. Um, the route is, is 1,300 nautical miles. That's the theoretical route. Um, you have islands on the way, you have currents. You have traffic, squalls, uh, squalls. Um, as you get closer to the U.S., like a lot more traffic. So 1,300 <laughs> nautical miles is roughly half of the Atlantic Passage, a little bit under. Um, so 
you know, where we thought we would be doing two major passages and then a little leisurely jaunt to Miami. It's now become the third passage in one season. And for two people double-handed, uh, it's a little challenging, just mostly because of the sleep situation. Because the, um, the conditions are, as Stefan said, a little more challenging just because we're around boats, we're around currents, we're around islands, we're around squall systems. And so the watches are actually more intensive than being offshore. And the plan was, and hopefully it still is, to continue to document with a daily vlog that third leg of our trip, Caribbean to the Miami Bocho. So that means you, have, you need time during the day to do the video editing. So, so yeah, we need, to, we need to find some help and um, to get at least one additional competent crew um, and then um, go for that. It's gonna take more than two people to get this passage done. And um, we're trying to figure out what our options are for that. Um, a lot of the skippers in the area already have commitments and um, you know we're hoping to to find some help by people who know these boats and understand kind of what's involved uh, to get there so we're working with Utremer as well to uh, get that information and see if we can start planning so right now just a straight um, uh, route Taking, not taking into account uh, weather current uh, from Martinique right here um, is going through in between Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic and bringing us uh, between Cuba and the Bahamas and head to Miami. That's uh, the 1300 nautical miles right there. The other way to go would be over the top of the islands which has some benefits but mm, i don't know initially we were going to do our own weather routing because we will have had time to kind of learn about the area talk to other people do some island hopping uh, in this case we're starting to look at um, hiring a weather router somebody who knows uh, those waters the weather and it's still winter in higher north like we kind of forget the weather is nice here we're like in uh, shorts and t-shirts but you see cold fronts going through the u.s and some go down and then pass over the bahamas so that will change the wind rotation we could have a wind um, uh, sailing so based on time either we have to go through it or we can find shelter late for that cold front to go by and and pass behind it <laughs> but I guess one of us has to stay. I'll take one for the team. Okay. How are you feeling about this hole? Well, the mosquitoes were eating me, but just took a shower, so I kind of feel like washed a lot of stuff away. But I must say, like this afternoon, as they were like grinding, I mean, not cutting, I was filming at one point just like got taken by emotions because uh, you see a hole in your boat in a brand new boat and uh, I was like oh it's heartbreaking and I know I trust these people I trust the process and I know it's going to be as good as new but you cannot avoid when you're looking at this to just be like feeling like sad yeah. Well, I went. yeah how do you feel I think I've emotionally detached myself a little bit. Um, I think that's what I do when I try to protect my feelings. And um, in the end, it's a boat. Um, it is our home, but uh, it's something that can be fixed. I'm just, again, really grateful nobody got hurt. And uh, yeah, we had a good crossing, so I don't want it to erase any of the good. So that's where I'm at. Right. So if any of you have any experience, recent experience going through a passage such as this from Martinique to Miami, 
um, and understand the areas to look out for or things we should be thinking about, please make sure you put them in the comments. We're, we're in learning mode, so we'd love to hear it. We also are uh, excited to see Moonshot back underway with Nick aboard and uh, making his way also. So it's a full court press for Utremer to get the boats to the boat show uh, and be able to you know, showcase the, these, uh, these boats. They're beautiful, you've seen ours. Um, we'd love to hopefully meet up with everybody who's gonna be there. So fingers crossed. Um, on our race against time, and um, we'll continue to share our journey. Time goes by, yeah, you and I are running out, running out. Time goes by, I change my mind about you and I, you and I. So would you stay?